Welcome to the Success Journey Show. Let's travel together through the lives of individuals on the road to success. Hey, what's going on, travelers? It is Ricky Venters and Marlon Madden back with you for another week of the Success Journey Show. Marlon, I think I finally got the STEM podcast out of my uh, system. <laughs> Success Journey Show flows quite nice now, yeah, yeah. you know? Not saying there's anything wrong with my uh, STEM. Um, oh, look at that. I can't even say it right. There we go. But anyways, we're back with you for another week. It's Ricky Venters and Marlon Mad. And Marlon, what's good, bro? How you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing well. One day when you <laughs> when you introduced me, I should just be like, United States Marine Corps finest or something like that. <laughs> Get it out my system, too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I, I never said this before, man, but you do a lot of you do a lot of um, you could tell you were in recruiting for the Marine Corps when you're on this podcast, because like every podcast you tell you say, hey, you know, I was in the Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> you said that line at least two or three times. Like, hey, yeah, you know, I was in, I'm in the Marine Corps. So uh, in the Marine Corps, we. I was like, man, I, maybe I should talk a little bit more about what I do outside of it. Yeah. Hey, you need to, you're not getting no money from John Hoskins for, 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 for uh, advertisement, man. You, you, you need to yeah, exactly. It up. There, you need to we there we go. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, man, but I've been, been living the dream, but you know what I'm doing right now? And I can't believe I'm going to say this. I miss California, man. Oh, Only the weather. Man. Only the weather. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's turning though. It's turning. It's not going to get California warm, but it's it's going to it's, it's turning. I need it. Cold. I need it, man. I want to. I want to leave a coat in my closet. I want to wear regular clothes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, don't get fooled though, because Maryland will get in the summertime and get to the point where you ha- it has you missing Canada. <laughs> <laughs> It's just that type of place, man. Oh my goodness. Just, just that type oh of place. Oh my goodness. So, but yeah, man, let's 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 uh jump into our our guest today, man. We have a very special guest uh with us and um honored to have her on the show with us uh today. She is uh, known as Kinesia Genus. Kinesia, thank you for joining us. How are you doing I'm today? I'm doing awesome, Ricky and Marlon. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I was a little bit reluctant when I got the invitation, um, but it's it's yeah, a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. I'm so proud of you guys. You're doing an awesome job. Oh, thank this you. Is thank you. So thank very you. needed. And, um, you oh. know, my children and I, my husband, too, we've been really enjoying the content that you've been bringing. You're doing a really great job. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, man. Thank you for oh, being here. Appreciate it. Appreciate yes, it. yes, yeah. yes. Hey, Kinesia, like I know you've been listening. We're going to ask you the question. Tell us about yourself. OK. All right. So like you've said, my name is Kinesia Genus, and you'll hear a bit of an accent a bit or a lot. I'm originally from Kingston, Jamaica, and um, after my undergrad program, relocated to the United States, upstate New York, and I'm currently living just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And um, outside of that, I've been married this year as amazingly, our 20th anniversary, we have two amazing children. And um, I was at some point a teacher, taught middle school ESL in New York City, And I'm a very new nurse practitioner. I just graduated, just passed my boards. And um, I've worked as a nurse for, I can't believe it's been almost 10 years now. So that's a little bit about me. Mm, That's amazing. And I'm going to tell you guys, it is hard. uh, Be very transparent with our our listener. It's hard interviewing Kinesia because I know Kinesia so well. And I don't want to give, I don't want to, I don't want to jump too far into stories or do, do whatever. So bear with, bear with us as we ask these questions, man, but it's going to be phenomenal, phenomenal story. Yeah. So Kinesia, um, you, you said you, uh, went mm-hmm. to school in Jamaica, came to the States, uh, and you were an, uh, English, mm-hmm. English teacher, right? Um, English, why English? Like what, 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 right. That's a good question. And I think, you know, um, a lot of it probably has to do with my upbringing, you know, my parents, my mom actually graduated from nursing school when I graduated with my first degree. So it was much later in life for her. And my dad, 
you know, did not, does not have a college education, but education was always very, very important to my family. It wasn't an option. You were going to college. The question was, though, what were you going to do? Like nobody guided me in that regard. It was just you're going to school, you're getting a degree, you're doing something. And so I kind of had to figure that out on my own. And initially, even before that undergrad degree, a lot of people don't know that I went to a community college for two years and I was one class short of getting an associate's degree in business, right? Which is so not not who I am. Wow. But, <laughs> it, it, hold on, hold on. In, in, in New York? No, that was right after high school in Jamaica. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was wow. the very first very first thing I did, you know, as far as tertiary education. Okay. And so I decided to move out of the city and I went to a little Adventist university in Jamaica. And I registered initially as a business student. But I remember I was there and I met this incredible professor, um, Mr. Price, Dr. Eric Price. And it was like my freshman comp class. And I remember him just talking about following your passion. And, you know, he was so in love with language. And I knew that was something that I enjoyed and I was good at, too. And so I think within the first two weeks of school, I decided to switch my major to English. Um, And so I leaned into that because people always told me, you know, you have a great voice, you're so good with words. And so I kind of switched my thinking from just doing what I felt everyone else was doing to doing English, even though I wasn't sure what it would look like, how it would play out or what I would do with it. But I decided to do that because I knew at least that was something people told me, you know, I was good at. But I I also enjoyed teaching. Mm. Um, I had the privilege of teaching um, a lot of immigrants. And so I taught English as a second language. And I think the real joy of teaching wasn't so much about teaching, you know, kids English, but teaching them about life. Like, I think I lectured so much in my classroom. They probably got a little annoyed with me. But I got to share a lot of lessons that I had learned, you know, things that I wasn't sure. Like, I remember I had kids in the Bronx who had never left the Bronx, kids who had never who lived in New York, but had never been to Manhattan, you know. Mm. And so just kind of trying to get Mm. them to understand that the world is bigger than what they know and the little, you know, corner bodega and all of that. So I was very passionate about that. I really enjoyed that. Those were some good years. It was extremely hard. Mm. It was very, very challenging. But um, it's something that I felt I was good at and something that I enjoyed doing. Oh, man. I'm going to tell you, Ricky, Mm. I 100 percent appreciate that Kenesha is good with English because people out there. Let me tell you something. (laughs) A lot of times you see my post or something like that. I run it through Kenesha first. (laughs) Yes. But now you're putting me out there and I'm going to have to make sure everything is spot on. Okay. So you're going to be hearing from me a lot more. Nothing's, nothing's going to slip through. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I I run it through. I'm like, should I put this here? She's like, or or I'd put out something in advance. And she, she'll text me and she'll text yeah, me the right yeah. phrase. And I'll be like, oh, I pull it down and put it right back up. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, now, uh, kind of give us some uh, 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 the mindset of when you move from Jamaica. But I know you were traveling from before. So you're kind of experienced with, um, you know, traveling outside of Jamaica. But what was the mm-hmm. mindset of living in Jamaica versus how the living is in America? Wow. Living in Jamaica versus living in the States. Okay. You know what? I came from an environment where, like I said, you know, education was very important. And the funny thing is people look at me and think like, I have educational accomplishments, but I tell you in the church that I grew up in, I was like an underachiever. Okay. Seriously. Mm. Like there were people who, you know, Mm. at 18 had gotten scholarships, to colleges and universities in the States and were coming here for medical school There are people I grew up with who are professors at like Ivy League universities. So I was really like, you know, the one still, you know, trying to figure out I was doing well academically, but, um, you know, not at the level of some other people I had, you know, the privilege of growing up with. But the difference for me was that, like I said, education was not an option. And, you know, the thing, too, is that we didn't have the, um, I think, privileges as far as secondary education as people here do. You know, there's no real public school system like you pay for school in Jamaica, you know, through 
elementary, primary, secondary, your parents pay tuition, you purchase uniforms, you purchase books, no one provides you pencils, nobody provides textbooks. And Hmm. so coming here, I don't think a lot of people who are here understand or appreciate, you know, what they already have and, you know, how much take them because you have already that support that so many people don't have you can imagine if you're if you're someone in jamaica and your family can't afford to send you to school you know what you just don't go to school you really don't oh man um because they they can't afford tuition or you know you get help or something or you may you know go to a school that they're probably going to be training you to 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 learn a trade which you know absolutely nothing wrong with that but And I'll tell you my educational experience, which that was interesting as far as the differences between um, school in Jamaica and school in the States. Very early on, you are what they call streamed and kind of um, your your future is determined in a way. Very early on, they determine what your academic propensity is. And so they'll rank students. Um, based on what they think you'll be able to achieve. So say um, just before high school, which starts at seventh grade, they may decide, well, you're a smart kid. So let's have you do, um, in addition to your core subjects, you'll do physics, chemistry, biology. Or they may say, okay, you know what? You look like you're somebody who um, you should do business classes, right? So you'll do accounting and some other things. And then they'll have other students who they're not sure what you're going to become or what sure, you know, not sure what your, you know, level of achievement is going to be. That was me. Get like, and that was me too. You get like just a mishmash, you know, of classes. God help you, you know, hopefully you'll be able to make some sense of it. And so very early on, you know, your future was, was almost determined because if you, you know, later on decided that, okay, maybe I'd like to do medicine or maybe I'd like, it's already too late because that door has pretty much closed very early on for you, you know? Mm. Wow, that would have been really yeah. bad for me. I mean, my, my third grade teacher already told me I wouldn't have been in in life. And I was in the, was in the States. And look at you now, it's okay. <laughs> wow. 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 So, so, so you're teaching, uh, English, you know, I mean, from the sounds of it right now, if you didn't, if you didn't introduce yourself saying, Hey, mm-hmm. you're in nursing and you spent some time in nursing, you know, people would be like, Oh man, she really had passion for English. And, um, so what, what made you make the shift from okay. English into nursing? Cause those are to me, it seemed like two totally right. different. They seem that tracks. way, but they really aren't. And I'll tell you what it is. You know what? When I mm-hmm. was on, um, I had the privilege of being a New York City teaching fellow. And that's like, I have so many stories of just like, how did I even, you know, end up here? And I did that for two years, had the opportunity to complete a master's in education, fully paid for. And at the end of those two years, we decided we were, you know, going to start our family. So when I graduated from City College, I was four months pregnant and decided at that point not to return to teaching. Um, you know, we've homeschooled our kids. We have a 14 year old and an 11 year old. And thankfully, by some miracle, we've been able to do that. And so when I was pregnant, I knew that I, you know, we did not want to put our child right away in daycare. And so we chose for me to stay home with, 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 or for, with our son at the time. And so I was home for a couple of years. So I didn't go directly from teaching to nursing. I'll, I tell people it's really funny because growing up, even though I didn't know what I wanted to do, there were some things that I definitely did not want to do. And they were teaching and nursing, right? <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. Because like growing up in Jamaica, there were, you know, I felt like limited options as to what you could be. You know, everybody, you're either a doctor, lawyer, police, teacher, uh, that was probably it, or a nurse, right? And so I didn't want to do any of those. I wanted to do something different, something exciting, something that, you know, had a nice title. And so I didn't want to teach. I didn't want to do nursing. And I think a lot of people in my family had done both of those occupations as well. So I was home for a couple of years and then being home, you know, I realized I needed to get back into the workforce. 
And so nursing was something that I felt at least would allow me the flexibility to still be home with my children. Um, you know, I could work nights, I can work three 12 hour shifts. And so I decided that's something that I, I wanted to pursue. And so I decided to go to a little community college near where we lived, which worked out beautifully and, you know, had lots of help and support along the way to make that feasible, to make that happen. But I tell people, and you said, Ricky, that teaching and nursing seem to be, you know, two very different fields. And I say they're very similar because in order to do both, in order to do both well, you have to care about people. You have to genuinely care about people. If you're a teacher, you have to care about your students. If you're a nurse, you have to care about your patients. So they're caring professions. And so in that way, even though they seem very different, they are very similar. And let me tell you, you do a lot of teaching and nursing. OK, mm. <laughs> you can't even begin to imagine, mm. you know, how many people are living with chronic conditions. They have heart failure, but they're eating, you know, chicken wings from the place around the corner. Not understanding, <laughs> you know, the impact of mm. sodium on your blood pressure and how that's just going to exacerbate your heart condition. So they're very similar, even though they're so different. But you have to care about people. And um, there's a lot of teaching in nursing as well. Mm. Now, in terms of like, talk about where, you know, you know, you said when you were a child mm -hmm. and they put you in a category with kids, not necessarily certain as to what your right. uh, trajectory is going to be, what your profession is going to be when you get older. Um, you know, you go into English and I know English is more of a, uh, I don't even know the right words, but you're doing a lot more lang mm -hmm. language arts and things of that nature. When you get into nursing, you're bringing a lot more science and mathematics and things and all that stuff in there, which are two different mm -hmm. academic tracks per se. And some people would say, hey, I'm not a math person or I'm some people Bio say, I'm not a biology. Some people say, I love right. English, communication, I'm a biology, you know. So how did you how did you handle, you know, switching over in that regards and really just really reconfiguring, you know, just the way that you think about things to more of a scientific approach um as well as you know have already having that natural caring uh, i think a big part people. of what allowed me to to be able to make that transition successfully was that by then i was already older i think at that point when i started school i was probably mm. 29 or 30 so i was you know an older student so i had a very different mentality before People would tell me what they felt my capabilities were. But by this point, I had learned and I, I developed that mentality that there's nothing that I couldn't do if I applied myself to it. So with maturity, mm -hmm. I realized that I'm looking around and I'm seeing people around me. And the more, you know, I'm growing and learning and maturing, I'm recognizing that it's not so much about like any kind of innate ability or natural propensity. It's just a matter of, how badly do you want it? Are you willing to work for it? Are you willing to, to make the sacrifices? Are you willing to put the time in? And that, you know, just learning that there's nothing that I can't do. I'm like, if, you know, if everybody else around me is doing it and there are people who are doing it, then, you know, why not? There isn't anything wrong with, with my brain. <laughs> you know? So yeah, with hard yeah. work, you know, and commitment, I, I'd be able to, to achieve it. And I really, I was, um, you know, there was trepidation at first because when I decided to do trepidation. nursing, listen, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I hope I used it right. But, um, <laughs> I decided that I was going to just do biology that first semester. I'm like, you know, I haven't done any sciences. Like you said, Ricky, my background is totally different. And um, I'm just going to try it and see how I do. That's really how I approached it. And, you know, I was able to do that successfully. Mm. And then let me tell you, lots of blessings. Doors just opened. Even me just getting into the nursing program. Like I have lots of stories. Um, and wow. just, you know, being able to make that transition. But I decided, you know, let me start slowly. And then when I saw that I could do that, I mm -hmm. said, you know, what? if I apply myself, I'll, I'll be fine. So, man, so man, now, so now you're ahead, now bro. you've made that trend. You you've already we're at the story now where you've made the transition from being a teacher. You homeschooling for a while, and then now you're making the you're you're, you're going through your nursing, and mm -hmm. you're actually working as a nurse now. How 
How seriously do you take your job? How much do you love people? Now, I know the answers to this, but I want our, our listeners to understand how much. And we're, we're, we're setting the stage for what comes later on because of okay. the love for people. So how much, how much do you love people? How much do you actually care about your patients? Okay. So I've had the privilege of working in a number of different areas in nursing, which is one of the things that I love. Like there's so many different areas, you know, like I've worked medical surgical, I've worked ER, I've worked home health, I've worked lots of different, different areas of nursing. And I've had the privilege and I love that I get to meet people from all different backgrounds, you know, but there, there is like at the very base or at the very core, the fact that we all have the same needs, right? Everybody wants to be respected. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to, to felt that they're cared for. And so when I approach it that way, then that allows me to be able to, to bring my best to every mm. you know person that I meet. Like when I go in, especially in healthcare and you're working in nursing, you're often meeting people at one of their lowest points, right? At one of their lowest points. And let me tell you, sometimes when people are at their lowest points, they're not often the nicest. Okay. Mm. So it can be, it can be mm. very, very challenging. But um, if you understand that, you know, this person is going through a difficult time, this is understandable and just try to treat people still the way that you would want to be treated, you know, and it's very challenging because, because like I said, you know, people aren't often the nicest and um, you kind of have to give them that pass because you're the professional, you're the, you're the caregiver. And so regardless of, you know, their reality, you still have to go in, you know, determined with excellence and with, like I said, treating people the way you would want to be, be treated. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and the, the nurses, you guys take the Hippocratic oath, right? No, physicians take the Hippocratic oath, but we do. I know we did like a Florence Nightingale um, thing as a part of or um, I guess when you, in, you know, initiation or transition into nursing, I think when you graduate or shortly before that. So it's a little different, um, but that is it, it is really and my per all the time when I go in is to 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 do good and no harm, which is, I think, the Hippocratic oath, actually. Um but there is, you know, some sort of guideline or some sort of vision that you have as nurses to always provide, you know, a certain level of care to the patients that you're interested with. Mm. OK. All right. We're setting the stage. We're setting the stage. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, my mind is just working 100 miles an hour right now. Just, just like Ricky said, I don't want to bring it too early. Okay. But we're, setting the, we're setting the stage. We're setting the stage. <laughs> So one, 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 one more thing okay. before we even go there. And I want you to talk to the mm -hmm. parents that are looking at, okay, mm. changing their careers and being kind of afraid or uh, uh, what was the word you, would you use? Uh, uh, no, just leave it, leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was trying to, trying to show where I learned something on this podcast, but uh, I'm going to let it go. Uh, it's going to come back to me. I'm going to say it in the wrong context, too. Right? Uh, but, you know, they're, they're afraid, you know, because they're like, man, you know, typically the, the typical pattern for for mm -hmm. most people mm -hmm. is, all right, we go to school, you know, a primary, secondary school, post uh, graduate, even then. Um, whatever, higher education. And um, then you start your family after that. And then you just, you know, you work your career and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. to start over after you have a family and you've already gone right. through it, you yeah. had just finished your master's, you know, so it wasn't like you had just, right. you know, did a couple of years. Right. You, you put some time in, you know, mm -hmm. now you have your family, you know, talk to people that are like in that situation, like, yo, they know they need to change something. They know the way life is, no matter whatever, their situation may be, they know that there has to be a change and they see that education may be that means of doing it. You know, talk to that parent that is this kind of contemplating right now, whether or not. And, 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 and before you do that, Kinesia, mm -hmm. um, I want you to also help them to understand because a lot of people will be like, well, she had a husband that was making a million dollars so she could. <laughs> Right. So she could stay home. He must have had some good, super uh, yeah. job. 
that he can stay <laughs> home, that she can stay home and do the kids, then decide that she wanted to be a nurse after. Set the mm. set the state stay on uh, the table and help him to understand what um what kind of job your husband was doing and everything at the right, same time that you're making right, that sentence. Right. Listen, that was that was a huge, huge sacrifice. That was a huge sacrifice. Like, you know, at that time. We, when we um, just had Nadu and we were living out in the country, far from everyone. And my husband, you know, was a teacher <laughs> at the time. And the teachers, unfortunately, don't make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And so when we decided for me to be home with me, it was it was it was hard. It was hard. We had just bought a house. Things did not end very well with that. OK. Mm-hmm. And so. It, it was very challenging, but I just knew that if I wanted something different, then I had to do something different, right? Because I recognized that, okay, you know, I when I started nursing, I didn't go and do a four-year program at an elite college. I was an adult with responsibilities. I needed to make this transition um, quickly, and I needed to still, you know, be home for my children. I couldn't commute to to New York City to go to you know an accelerated program and so what was most feasible and that worked best for us was for me to do an associate's degree this is after you know having had my bachelor's a master's, a master's degree <laughs> do an associate's degree at a community college right because it was cost effective i was close to home and let me tell you for parents who are thinking about that i always encourage people and not just older people who are thinking about making that transition but even the younger people if you're thinking about nursing do not saddle yourself with forty thousand fifty thousand dollars of debt of debt to become a nurse get an adn do an associate's degree program because it's the same rn test it's the same um category that you're in you're a registered nurse you take the same test and the pay is for all intents and purposes as far as i know probably a dollar an hour difference right Mm. and um the only difference is you know maybe if you're looking to be in an administrative or supervisory position then you may need to get your bachelor's but i think at least initially if you're thinking about it do an associate's degree get a job in, in a facility or in a hospital and then there's so many options. There's tuition reimbursement. Many of them have, um, you know, programs with local colleges for you to be able to transition from RN to BSN. But at least you'll be able to very quickly, probably within two, three years, get in, start working and not have to accumulate that amount of debt, you know, going to a four year college. So I always encourage people to do that. But I'm glad you pointed that out. Like making that decision to do that was difficult, but I knew if I didn't do something different, then in two years, guess what? We'd be at the same place. We'd mm. be at the same place. So two years was mm. going to come or go, whether or not we we made a change. And so <laughs> I just recognized, like you mm. know what, it was um you know at the right time to just kind of make that move and at least realize that we wouldn't be you know further in the hole where we were. But then it was an opportunity that with some time and with some sacrifice and with some investment that we'd be able to really move forward, you know, in our lives. Man, you have Ricky, yeah. Ricky you know, yeah. it's funny. Kinesa's story and Donovan's story, Kinesa's together can go so many different angles. Mm-hmm. When, because when you just said just a while yeah. ago, um, and I'm not going to, if you don't want to share it, you don't have, um, I'm no, not going to share it. Don't if don't you don't want to share it, where you say, <laughs> where, where you say, um, um, that didn't end well with the house. Right, with the house, yeah. Our house ended up going into foreclosure. And let me tell you, those days were... And I, it's something that we didn't even talk to a lot of people about. A lot of people around us didn't even know that we were experiencing that. And the funny thing is, like I said, when we decided and when we were able to, at that point, to buy a house, we really, really tried to find the least expensive house that we could. People were like, your house don't have a garage, your house... Uh, we house. They remember we didn't have flooring. We had that blue lining, you know, the underlayment. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we put down floors. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> we did eventually, but we had that blue underlayment. And let me tell you, we were as proud as could be because if I'm okay with it, if I know this is what we can afford, listen, I'm not worried about the rest of y'all. Okay, <laughs> I'm all right where I am. Yeah. But it was very, very challenging, mm-hmm. you know, and um. 
I, I remember like, and I was home, Donovan was, you know, teaching at school. And I remember like being in the house with the kids, fearful that there would be a knock on the door. Mm. Okay. Fearful that there would be a knock on the door and that, you know, we would be thrown out or things would be thrown out or, you know, it, it was very difficult. It was very difficult. We've come a long way. I'm so thankful. But um, you have to, the biggest takeaway, I think, is, you know, if you want something different, you have to do something different. <laughs> hey, that's mm. the title for Man, right there. You want something <laughs> different, you got to do something different. I love it. You've been listening to the Success Journey Show. You can check us out on our social media on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Also on our website, thesuccessjourneyshow.com. Enjoy the rest of the show. So, so like just going on with that whole theme, want something different, you got to do something different. You guys, mm-hmm. you guys pack up and you move down to yeah. uh, Atlanta, down to our Georgia, Atlanta area. And um, just to talk about that experience. What, what, I'm, <laughs> you know, first we got to paint the picture as to mm-hmm. where you were in New York. Uh, <laughs> got back in the cold where it, the sun, the sun uh, shine. It really did. Two I'm telling you, we year. had to. We when we went to their house, and you know what's funny? As much as and I was in the, uh, Ricky, Ricky, I'm gonna say it again. I was in the Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came to New York, I had to drive up to New York, and then it I felt know. like I had to make another drive to yeah. their house. Yeah. So it's like two vacations in one. For real, but, for real. We were but, like an hour and a half from everybody, like 70 miles going to church, you know, like three days a week. Yeah, it, it was out there <laughs> because but, hey, it was cheaper. It was cheaper out there. OK. But yeah, so you guys moved down to um, Atlanta with a mm-hmm. completely different environment. A deeply right. different uh, climate <laughs> zone, um, but 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 tell us about you know mm-hmm. even this that transition yeah, going well, to Atlanta. You know, for us, I we had been looking at different places to move to, and a big big factor for us was housing costs. It really was um, that I knew we just mm-hmm. could not mm-hmm. with um, you know a teacher's salary and um, you know be able to afford you know, a home, a home again there. And um, I was tired of the the Catskill winters. Okay. <laughs> and so I knew I was not moving anywhere where it was colder than where I already was. And so we thought of a couple of places and we came to visit Georgia. And I remember us driving down. And as we're driving down, I think it was probably around sometime in October or November. And as we're driving down, I noticed we're just taking off layers you know, we're outside filling up the minivan and it's just getting warmer and warmer. And this is like November and we just left all this snow in New York and we came to visit and just fell in love. So we were where we lived in New York, like Ricky said, was way out there in no man's land. Um, nothing out there, really. You have to drive like maybe 45 minutes to get to a mall, maybe at least 20, 25 minutes to get to a supermarket. We were an hour and a half from all our friends, at least. And then we come to Georgia and we're just outside of Atlanta. So we were in Conyers Covington area, which people think that's country. But let me tell you, it was nothing. I I tell them this is like big city compared to where we live. Okay, this is big city. Y'all have no idea. And so I think, um, thankfully, the children were younger. And so it wasn't as difficult. We really, it was hard for us to leave, like leaving, because guess what? We're leaving our support system. Like your family, Ricky, all our friends or church mm-hmm. family. We were, we were all into that. Like that was our life, you know? And so when we came down here, it was just going to be us and the kids. And um, thankfully, like I said, they were younger. They missed everyone, but they were younger. And um, we just loved it. We loved the weather, housing costs less. There were opportunities for work. And when we left, as a matter of fact, I had gotten um, like three offers. I came down and had three interviews and got three offers. Donovan was still looking for work as a teacher. And I think maybe two weeks before we decided to move, he got an offer from a school. And we were just like, look, um, you know, one of us is working. We'll be able to figure it out. But you know, I wasn't going to be renting a house in New York. Mm. 
so so so, yeah. so this is it now. So you go, you move down to Georgia. You're all uh, everything is working out. Everything is falling in place. And tell us of how the living conditions are when you first get there. The living conditions, like in terms of, um, I know you guys didn't just jump straight into a house. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. First we we're in hotels because we were trying. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all digging real deep. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> when we moved first, we had a little bit of money and, you know, we had seen like super cheap houses and we're like, you know, we're going to buy something even if we have to fix it up. And, you know, that's where we thought it was going to go, but it didn't. And so we were in a hotel, like a little north of Atlanta, really nice area. You know, I think it was like Sandy Springs or something, that area we were. And then our money started dwindling. OK, <laughs> and we realized that we probably needed to, you know, make a move to a different type of hotel, okay? <laughs> hotel motel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we were there and then um, we rented a duplex because I said, you know, the money we're paying and we're not finding something that's, you know, somebody's accepting our offer on and, you know, the prices are going up. And so we um, we found a place to rent and that's where we were. But, you know, one thing I tell you, I I try to make wherever I am home. OK. Yes. And my husband's mentality yeah. is probably yeah, a little yeah, different because yeah. he asked me, like, why are you putting up pictures or why are you doing this? You know, we're not going <laughs> to stay here. But I'm like, look, if it's a cardboard box, I would make the cardboard box nice. OK, yep. if that's what we have and that's where we are, yeah, then it's nice. going to be home because I didn't want my kids or the family to feel like, you know, we were always in transition. Right. Mm. So we were at that little place yes. in Conyers where they eventually broke in and stole everything that plugged in. <laughs> and I tell you, when we moved, we had no idea what it was like, right? Like when we when we were robbed, everybody would say to me, like, you didn't have an alarm system. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I didn't know everybody here needed to have an alarm system because we're from, you know, upstate in no man's land, upstate New York, where we literally would leave the house open. The, like we'd be gone for the weekend and our house would be unlocked. <laughs> doors unlocked I would go to Walmart and leave my key in the car I had to like make it a, a, a real point of duty to like when I left my car like to you know take my key out and lock the car when I moved to Georgia so it was a bit of a transition okay at that end it, it certainly was because it's funny like when you watch the news when we were in New York you would see things you know on TV and it would be like far away from where you're from mm -mm -mm. right here it's like there was a robbery or there's like a prisoner loose in Conyers, you know, it's like, but uh, actually we live in Conyers, you know, so that that's been different coming down here. And I think even being upstate, you know, I've always worked in areas where a lot of people didn't look like me and coming to Georgia, you're wondering where are the people who, you know, are on the other side. Um, <laughs> it's you know, everybody's oh, black. You. Everybody's <laughs> black. All the doctors in the hospital are black. Everybody's in, in the mall is black. And you've said that too, Ricky. So don't don't act funny. You guys, you guys with yeah. white people. No, I, I, yeah. okay. exactly. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> hey, <man. I'm> culture shock. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that you're going home like everybody's black. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, it was so weird. It was so weird, but right. she's from Jamaica. That's after you know, yeah, I was in New York, upstate New York, for a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, so so your uh, man, so, so I hope the. the uh, travelers, man, we're not losing you with this, man, but we're really just taking you mm -hmm. step by step in this journey, and this journey is amazing, and um, you know, just hearing the transitions, and we're purposely taking you through these different transitions and um, of life, and we got, got to the point where you see you know, everything is great, you know, you know, going in after her passion, English, and then things start shifting, mm -hmm. just because life, life changes, you know, and the circumstances come up, and um, different opportunities come, come about, and as they're taking advantage of life and just the different obstacles that are, are facing them and, and, and her, she, you know, they end up eventually moving down to down South for another opportunity and another mm -hmm. chance to make everything uh, great, you know? And one thing I admire about uh story so far is just, there, there's never, mm -hmm. no, there's never yeah. a quit in there, you know? And, and, and it may be time, multiple times where you like feeling like, mm -hmm. Oh man, what's going on. But, you know, overall, 
it's like, there's not a quit. It's always like, Hey, you know, wherever I am, I'm going to make it beautiful, you know? And that's not just place of location, but more so mentally, uh, uh, state of mind, whatever it may be, I'm just going to make it great where I'm at. And, you know, so you you say, yeah, you got, (laughs) you guys down in Atlanta now, you you just got robbed and all these different things. And, you know, um, but then something happens that's very, very critical, um, to, to you now, you know, um, Okay. One second. I know. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sure. we had to do it again. So, when they get robbed, you know, mm-hmm. everybody's like on on a cliffhanger now. They get robbed, and what happens? Take us to your. I I I, I want to paint the picture that you now you're in a brighter place. Everything seems, you know, the road seems straight now. It's not right. curvy anymore. Right. Um, yeah. kind of tell us where you know you're prompted to move, and right. then take us into that story that Ricky was talking about. Right. So we ended up moving um, from that area and moved out to, you know, a a nice house and things are going well. Donovan's teaching and I am um, working as a nurse. And um, February of 2014, just as I'm changing jobs and I'm starting to work in the emergency room, um, my husband one night tells me that he quit his job. Okay, not that he's going to quit, that he uh, had already quit it. Okay, (laughs) so yeah, I'm starting this new job, and let me tell you what's funny because I was starting a new job, and because he had resigned from his position as a teacher, the Lord was leading him to do so. I I couldn't understand it, yes, 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 I (laughs) I couldn't understand it, but he did. And so because I was starting a new job, typically we've always had our insurance and benefits and everything through Donovan. Right. But because, you know, he was not working and it was just going to be me. I said, you know what, I am going to sign up for every benefit possible. Just that if anything were to happen to me, they would be okay. Can you believe that? That's February of 2014. Mm. And um, then in November, my parents um, who live in England you know, we're visiting for Thanksgiving was going to be your first Thanksgiving with them here in the States. And they were very excited. The kids were excited to have their grandparents. And in November, that Saturday night before Thanksgiving, we were going to a couple's function at our church. And, you know, my dad's a real homebody. He's very quiet, did not want to go out, but we persuaded him to come along and Um, We wanted them to experience it. We have a really great ministry at our church. Can I do a shameless plug for Mary Jane for Punks? Okay. Yes, you can. Mary Jane for Punks. Um, It's an amazing ministry. And so we wanted them to come and experience that. And so we were on our way to the couples group, to the couples activity. And I'm going to tell you probably a lot of what I've been told, because funny enough, I don't even remember like leaving the house at night. I think it's come back over the years, you know, bits and pieces, but not the full picture. So we were on our way and saw an accident on the road. It looks like it had just happened. There were some people um, in the median. I remember people like coming out of the car like they were vomiting. And then there was another car on the side of the road. The airbag had deployed. Someone was still in the vehicle. And like I said, you know, my mom's a nurse, I'm a nurse and Donovan and I, this is not new for us at all, because even, you know, before the kids, we used to pick up people on the road and give them rides. And so we stopped to make sure that, you know, if everyone was okay, and, um, you know, if emergency services had been called, if 911 had been called and Donovan, my mom and I got out of our car. Donovan was kind of tending to the people who were in the median because, you know, he was kind of going back and forth. We thought, you know, that was more dangerous. So my mom and I were on the side of the road and apparently a car coming didn't see us and plowed into my mom, myself and another lady who was on the scene. So that was Saturday night. And I don't remember very much of what happened. My husband would probably be much better at telling this part of the story. But I do remember very briefly, like just lying on the side of the road and I'm clutching the leg of his pants. And I keep asking, you know, what happened? Because I had no clue. But um, woke up probably a day or two after that in an incredible hospital that I now work at. Best trauma hospital probably in the Southeast. And um, thankfully, wow. they were able to save my leg. My leg was partially amputated. 
And just Mm. by the grace of God, that's where they took me because my husband says when the EMT came and they cut my pants off, he just saw their faces change. And they said, we've got to go to Grady. Okay. When they saw what my leg looked like. So, um, my leg almost lost my leg during that time. You know, I had to have six surgeries. My mom had, I think four in the States and then went on to have at least one or two more when they were able to eventually, you know, get her well enough to where she was able to fly back, back to England. And so I was in the hospital for about 45 days, had six surgeries, pretty much had to, you know, learn to walk and had to learn really a new normal because even now, you know, I have a ton of scarring and um, my knee barely bends. I probably have maybe 30 degrees of flexion um, in my leg. And this is, you know, four, four and a half years, four years later. And so that's the experience. But at that time, and this is, I tell you, the Lord's doing, I'm still not okay with the fact that he resigned without telling me, but I'm thankful that he wasn't working because during that time in the hospital, Donovan was able to take care of my every need. I did not need a nurse to to do very much for me. And, you know, he was there with me taking care of my parents because my mom was also hospitalized with me. We had two young kids at home. It was a very, very, you know, difficult time. And just talking about how like, you know, God just makes a way like when I change jobs because he had just quit that I signed up for everything. You know, I had accident insurance. Mm. I had short term disability, everything. And so we were able to be OK, you know, and with the support of our church family and or families, we were able to be OK during that time. So that was a big life change for us. And I wasn't sure if I'd be able to go back to nursing because at the time I was working in the emergency room and that's very physically demanding. You know, it was hard for me with all my faculties and all of my, you know, extremities working well and all of that. But then to, I wasn't sure I'd be able to go back to doing that. And so I was fortunate enough and that's the beauty of nursing. I was able to find a job working from home. And I did that for about um, almost three years. Mm. I'm going to tell you the portion of the story that you said that you don't remember. And Mm -hmm. we know we're going to get Donovan on here and he's going to tell that. But what Donovan said to me was when he saw the car plow into you and your mother, that Mm -hmm. the only thing that he was thinking is I'm going to go over there and they're dead. Yeah. Because you guys flew up in the air and all this kind of stuff that he was, he he, he could um, tell that portion better. But what he imagined, I'm just imagine a husband you got you guys are going to a uh, mm. uh, uh, marriage uh, marriage aim for punks bringing out your parents they're coming from England because of your love for people that we were trying to show from before or we're showing mm. from before and you just caring for people that you end up in this situation and somebody plowing to you and your husband's walking over there thinking oh well I'm just mm. gonna go see the body of my wife yeah Man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, that's that's man. So yeah, like Marlon said, man, we 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 purposely asked a lot of these questions to lead up to this, but not to lead up to this because Correct. it's an end, but it's also because right. it's, it's part of the journey to where she is now. And um, you know, I, I know for many people that have gone through tragic moments in their life, sometimes it stunts their stunts mm-hmm. them, it freezes them um in life where they're they're so um scarred from that event that they don't feel like they can go on any, any longer, you know, and oh, oh, the trepidation oh, oh. that they go through. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> you used it. <laughs> I told you I was going to get it in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they go through is like, man, too much for them to bear. But mm-hmm. you started this podcast mentioning, hey, I've just uh, completed my, um, practitioner uh, program. my goodness, mm-hmm. uh, nursing practitioner program. And it's like being right from that point where you were in your house mm-hmm. working as a nurse now, because you really didn't have any other options in, in terms of where you're going to go back to do was being where you are now. Was that even in your mind? Was that even a, a dream? Do you think that it was you know, even I possible? I had a very different plan. I had a very different plan at the time. I was working in the ER and I wanted to do like about two years there and then maybe do some travel nursing. And this accident changed that. But while I was home recovering, 
And before I even started working, I realized that, hey, you know, I can't go back to work. But I had started my BSN and had taken a break. And I said, you know what, I, I, I can't do anything else. Let me finish school. Right. And so I said, let me use the time. And I decided to finish up my BSN. And as soon as I finished that, I decided that I'm going to I'm going to pursue um, becoming a nurse practitioner, especially having come from a different career where I had a master's degree. I did not want to remain in nursing and only have my bachelor's degree. And, you know, I tell people all the time, all degrees aren't created equal. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of people need to understand because you can have a master's in social mm -hmm. work. OK. And your compensation, your um, your capacity, your income <laughs> capacity is very different from another person who has a master's in, say, engineering or a master's in business or a ma very different. But they're all master's degrees. So you have to be very wise about what you choose to do and, you know, what you're getting in debt for or putting your money towards that at some point the return will be there. Like that's so important. And so when I decided to do a master's in nursing, a lot of people were saying to me, Oh, why don't you do, you know, a master's in edu in nursing education. And I was like, uh, no, been down that road. Okay. <laughs> so if I was going to do a master's in nursing, I'm going to do the one that gives me the biggest bang for my book. Okay. Yes, Cause these student loans ain't going to yeah. pay themselves. I hear that. All right. I hear that. And so I, that. I knew yeah. that with a master's degree as a family nurse practitioner, I'd be able to teach still, you know, I'd be able to practice as a nurse practitioner. I'd be able to do a lot of different things. I had more options. That was my thing to give myself more options. And so I, um, you know, decided to do that. And thankfully after, you know, little over two years, I've come to the end of that. And just like I said, recently took my boards and I'm kind of figuring, okay, where to go. But I think the biggest thing now where I am, and I was saying to my husband, like I'm learning to challenge myself, like not to be okay with being comfortable like I tell my yes. kids you know it's okay to try and do hard things and so a lot of times I think for me and probably most people you want to do what comes naturally you want to do what comes easily but I want to stretch myself and so I'm trying to find mm. an area that will give me additional skills that are going to be even more marketable and just not to be comfortable with doing, you know, going the easy route that I want to stretch myself and I want to learn more and I want to increase my own, you know, skill level. And so that's what I'm looking for. I'm, you know, kind of figuring out where to go next. And so, you know, starting, starting a new chapter, starting a new chapter at this point. So uh, one thing I want to um, bring out too, of course, um, Listeners or travelers, if you didn't understand that, and then after all this, they actually purchase a home, beautiful home, and um, and now they're in a whole a house for themselves again. So after foreclosure, losing a home, moving, all that kind of stuff, they're in a home for themselves again. So there is um, you know, life at <laughs> life Absolutely. after losing a home. Now Absolutely. the next thing, a lot of people are listening, and you know, if you're from New York, you hear. Oh, you got hit by somebody? Oh, you're <laughs> you're rich. I know. <laughs> oh, she got millions. Oh, she got dear. almost amputated leg. Oh, um, please. how many surgery? All these different stuff. Oh, and I, yeah. and you don't have to tell him your pockets. I don't want him to tell you your pockets. But oh, what, what nothing was to that? Tell. Wait, what nothing hey, to tell, Marlon? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and not and not because of anything wrong on you guys' part, but just the state laws, right, insurance exactly. rules. Exactly. All yeah, these different that's things. That's it. So, you know, like you said, probably New York story would have been very different. We probably would have become instant millionaires, but that's not what happened in Georgia. Okay. We have and that's the thing, like people always say, Oh, you went through all that. You're good. You know, uh no. <laughs> Um, you know, my, to tell you the truth, my hospital bills were like almost a million dollars. Hospital bills were like over 700,000. Okay? So you're a millionaire and paid it to the hospital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank God for insurance. Okay? Thank God for insurance. And so, you know, the compensation that we did get was not even, I can't even think of the fraction it was of that. It, I mean, it really, <laughs> but I tell you what, we did decide that when we got a little something and really nothing um, that we wanted 
to use it in a way that would that would change change our lives. It wasn't like we were just going to go on a trip or we're going to buy a new car or and so uh, my husband after I had that accident decided that he was go going to go into trucking. Mm. And he went to school, got his CDLA license, spent probably $3,000 doing that. And was making a lot more than he was as a teacher with over a decade of experience. <laughs> a three-week program. A three-week hey, program. Hey, I'm going to okay? tell you something. There will be part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Because a three-week yeah. program, like I said, wow. $3,000 and was making more than a teacher with, with over a decade of experience. And so we wanted to do something... <laughs> That would and, you know, my thinking right now, we're thinking is so very different from, you know, the way we were raised or the way we were socialized. Like our thinking now is what can we do to create a legacy? What can we do to create wealth? Because I tell you, I have not seen anyone gain wealth from working a nine to five for Mm. someone else, you know. Mm. So our thinking now is really changing and shifting as to. What can we do to create something that our children can be a part of that will help us to go to that next level? Because poor people can't help poor people, you know, (laughs) it's it's a real nice thought. But if you really want to make a difference, you know, the people who are able to make a real significant difference, you know, are people people with wealth. And so you've got to you've got to find ways to generate income. And so we're trying to get on y'all's level. You understand? Oh, yeah, right. we're learning it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we learned it late in life, but you know that's that's the thinking, and so just trying to see, okay, how can we use the gifts, the abilities, the education to to do something different to you know kind of create our own path with all of that. Man, you know it's man, this has been amazing. It's been <laughs> amazing, uh, and there's so much that we we can even dive deeper into but like marlon said there will be a part two and we'll bring we'll bring your husband in for the part two to even hear more more of his side of the story and 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 it, man you will see guys the the complete picture of it because what she shared what she shared to today man it was just oh uh, man i remember the moment when i got the call that it happened i'm just like you gotta be kidding me man and just being, I was frozen Correct. At, at, the, at the time, man, but just also comforting to know that who they were and just what they've been able to, to fight through in terms of to what you've heard so far uh, in their journey. And just now even seeing the beauty now was coming on the, on the other side of it, man, it's just an honor just to be close to them, uh, family, and um, because it motivates me. The, the, this right here is just, half of a, a portion of my motivation that I um one of the, the I, I would say the better half just because we're online right now <laughs> <laughs> but the better half for <laughs> uh, uh, so my motivation man that Correct. I've had for years upon years man just just growing up uh, in life man and I uh, really appreciate you just sharing mm-hmm. some of your journey with our listeners today because there, there are people at all phases of your journey that you've talked about. There's been, there are people there right now and are struggling to know what to do next uh, because they just can't see what's coming next. And what I just want to encourage everyone to know is that you don't have to know what's coming next. Just yes. make your moment. Yes. Beautiful. Hey, I, That's it. And for me, I'm going to tell That's you, uh, w- same thing with, 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 with hearing that situation. You know, I was just like Ricky frozen, like, wow. You never think that you could, you'll get that phone call that you don't know where the, if, if they're like, Hey, she's in a hospital, this is happening, this is happening. And I'm like, Oh my goodness, what is going on here? And one thing I could say that I appreciate a hundred percent and you brought it out was that everywhere you went, you made it comfortable and you made it a home. No matter if you guys lived in all the way in the Rocky mountains, <laughs> 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 right? You guys lived in that little place that you guys got robbed. Every time we came to your house, it was like the place to be. It was yeah, like the place yeah, to be. You yeah. didn't feel like I didn't want to go back, Ricky, to the Marine Corps. <laughs> right? I'd visit them and I was there in Georgia. I was so happy and all the different stuff. So I could tell you, man, and like Ricky said, 
you guys don't even understand that there's another dynamic that it, that's going to be shifting here that when part two comes, oh my goodness, it's going to be almost like a movie, man. I'm telling you. And we appreciate you guys. Um, appreciate yeah. you um, uh, uh, being so transparent and telling us your story. It's been my pleasure. You know, I always yeah. tell people I'm very quiet and my husband's going to say tonight that I prove his point that I actually do talk a lot. So my <laughs> <answer>. okay. <laughs> hey, I... <laughs> Yeah, this is oh actually yeah, for a long yes. podcast. And, <laughs> and and the picture, one of the pictures that you're gonna send us so we can put uh-huh. it up on our thumbnail is one of the ones I criticize. So oh, yes, 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 no, no, no. We want the picture with you sitting on your legs and, and you're showing oh, okay. your yes, okay. you're showing you're I showing will. the scars on your leg, man. I'm telling you, that picture is it, it, it embodies what we've been talking about. I'll send it. People think it's weird, but I do. I, I, I don't hide it. I don't hide it because, you know, this says that I'm a survivor. It really does. And it says, you know, I'm an overcomer. It says God brought me through. So I'm not ashamed of this at all. But thank you all for having me. It's been awesome. I love you guys so much. And I enjoyed this. Y'all are doing such an awesome job. Love this you. is this is this is amazing. All the lessons that I've learned listening to the other um the other guests. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we love you, too. And listeners we come to the end of another hey, where did they show contact you? and uh hey, we yeah okay oh yeah uh, can, can you see dinos at gmail.com okay and do you have any <laughs> um, social media handle i know you got them you know, I don't use it. I'm an old fogey. I have Instagram, but I don't use it. <laughs> but you can find me on Facebook. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, reach out. If you have any questions, uh, you're in that valley of just doubt or whatever it may be, um, she'll be more than willing to just um, give you some advice based on her perspective and her, and her life. So, listeners, this was Kinesia Genus. And uh, we were so grateful to have her as a guest on this show. But like we would say with all other all our other shows, if you are enjoying these episodes, enjoying the, sh- the show, please go to your platform that you listen to our show on and just leave a review. Uh, five star, four star. You know, we'll take all the stars and um, leave a, leave a comment. Let us know how we can improve it. You know, let us know if you have any suggestions or of any other guests that you would like to hear. Uh, like we said, we're building this podcast for you because Marlon and mine uh, desire is to help you to your destination. We're not telling you what that destination is, but we sure enough will do our best to help you get there. So we come to the end of another show and we will be with you again next week at the same time on the Success Journey Show. One love, right, one love. Have a good You've one. been listening to the Success Journey Show, where your dreams, drive, determination, and diligence are the foundation to success. For more information, check out thesuccessjourneyshow.com. The Journey Squad is here helping you to your destination. 